All right, what's up, Liquid Church? How y'all doing today? I am Niffin. I'm one of the pastors here. So glad you're with us today as we are wrapping up a series that we are doing called Dream Again. Uh, Incredible series. Hasn't been so far. God has been doing some incredible things through this series. But, you know, one of my favorite parts is that Pastor Tim, for the past two weeks, has been taking us through the life of a young man in the Bible named Joseph. He was known as the dreamer because God spoke to him through his dreams. And he had the ability to interpret the dreams of others. Now, i got to be honest with you. One of my favorite parts about this was being reminded that Joseph was this guy that had God with him no matter what. It didn't matter if he was in the pit. It didn't matter if he was in the palace. God was with him. And what's so encouraging about that to me was seeing how God would deal with Joseph. God would speak to Joseph specifically through his dreams. You see, dreams were a channel for Joseph to draw closer to God. Now, those of you watching online, i got to ask, how many of you have ever felt that God was speaking to you in a dream? Anyone? Ever had God speak? Okay, there's a couple of you. Now, I know if, uh, as soon as I say God speaking to you through a dream, maybe you're feeling a little bit of doubt. Maybe you're a little bit skeptical because maybe you've never heard of that or you wonder, what is up with that? Well, today we're going to see what the Bible says about dreams. Now, a few of you, I know you've had some dreams and I've talked to some of you and you've told me your stories about some incredible and meaningful things God has said to you through dreams and visions. And so today I want to talk about maybe an area of faith that for some of you may be unfamiliar, maybe even unexplored. In fact, I want to talk about today the realm of what the Bible calls prophetic dreams. Now, like I said, this could be a new experience for many of you, an area where you could actually grow closer in your relationship with God when you begin to recognize him speaking to you through your dreams, just like Joseph. You know, you might have read the story of Joseph, how he had a dream about, you know, all these sheaves of wheat bowing down to him, and he was able to get an interpretation and know what it meant. And you're probably thinking, well, dude, that's Joe the dreamer. I'm Jersey Joe, right? Like, does God even still do that? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, when we look at the scriptures, I want to look today at a couple of different ones, but in Acts chapter 2, it says this, in the last days, by the way, we're living in the last days today, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and your daughters will what? Prophesy. Let's all say it together. Prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. So the Bible actually teaches us that we'll be able to receive dreams, and these aren't your normal everyday dreams, but dreams from God where he actually gives you a message. He gives us messages of direction for our lives, of encouragement. It's what the Bible calls prophecy. Now say prophecy for me. Prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy simply is the ability to hear God's voice and actually speak what you're hearing to others. It's being able to hear God speak to you and, and maybe share a word of encouragement to others. In fact, I want you to hear Paul's, what Paul, one of the New Testament writers says, is the purpose of prophecy. He says this in 1 Corinthians. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Three parts of prophecy. Strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. In other words, God speaks to you supernaturally for a practical purpose. And, and here's what I love about this. It's not just for certain people. It's not like, okay, these people are the prophets and there's everyone else. No, no, no. Everyone has the ability to hear from God today. The, the gift of New Testament prophecy is for all y'all. And again, the purpose of this is to give you strength when you feel weak. It's to encourage you to keep going when you want to give up and to give you comfort when it feels like you're being torn apart and no one's in your corner. And one of the ways that God delivers these messages is through prophetic dreams. Prophetic dreams, prophetic visions. Now I want to maybe call out a difference between a dream and a vision. Now dreams, I think we all kind of know what they are. They happen while we sleep. Usually when we wake up from the REM cycle of sleep, that's when our brain is its most active. And what the latest research tells us is that our dreams are actually the way our brain processes our emotions. And in that process, sometimes God is revealing himself to us. Now, vision is also like a dream, but it's a dream that you have while you're awake, like a daydream. Have you ever had that? You're, you're kind of having a daydream and it feels kind of real and you're like transported out from the, the place that you're in. God sometimes speaks to us through those as well. Now, listen. I know that as soon as I mention things like prophetic dreams and visions, I'm going to get a mixed response because this is a diverse crowd, all y'all watching all over the world online. And on the one hand, there are some of you that when I start talking about God speaking through dreams and visions, you're like, Pastor Nathan, what kind of weird stuff is this? Like, is this like Inception? Like, you know, a dream within a dream? Like, this is way out there for me. I don't know if I'm super comfortable with this. But then I know some of you are like, yes, Pastor Nathan, about time. 
Like, like, like Pastor Nathan, I got my prophetic journal here. I've got my prophetic encyclopedia at home. I'm ready to interpret all of the dreams. I can tell you what the animals mean, what the colors mean, what the numbers mean. I, I got it all. And listen, if, if that's you, I just want to say I love your enthusiasm and your openness to God. I love your passion. But please remember that sometimes a dream, it's just a dream. And sometimes a nightmare is just a nightmare. But that's why it's so important to learn to discern what it is that God is saying. Because remember from the life of Joseph, where does dream interpretation come from? Interpreting dreams is Pastor Nathan's business? No, 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 no. It says it's God's business. Or maybe you're here and you're just curious. Maybe you don't know a ton about prophetic dreams. But like everything, the foundation for prophetic dreams and visions is always going to be the scriptures. Amen? So why don't you go ahead and turn with me to Job chapter 33. We're going to be looking at verses 14 to 18. And while you're turning there, I'd like to give you a little bit of insight here. Job was actually one of the oldest books of the Bible. And in these little verses, it tells us some fascinating insights about dreams. Let's read this together. It says this. For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams and in visions of the night when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. He whispers in their ear and terrifies them with warnings. He makes them turn from wrongdoing. He keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Now, the context is, is very interesting. You see, Job is this guy who's actually struggling. He's actually suffering. He's wondering, God, why am I going through this? And so he's talking with some friends. and He goes, guys, I have been praying and praying and asking God for wisdom. I'm asking God for insight. And he hasn't said anything. So that's one of his friends speaks up and he says, for God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. So he's like, Job, dude, God is speaking. He's talking all the time. The problem is you're checking Twitter, but God's leaving messages in WhatsApp. Meaning that, you know, ever had a friend just kind of give you some straight talk? Meaning this, you're looking for, for, for the messages in all the wrong places because look what he says in verse 15. He says, he speaks in dreams. In visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. Here's the deal, Job. God's been coming to you at night. It may not be the way you want God to come to you. It may not be the most comfortable, but that's where God's showing up. And we see in a couple chapters later that Job has a dream and he expects God. He actually meets God in this dream. He has an encounter that changes everything for him. Guys, God according to scripture, speaks through dreams. And there's at least three lessons that we can learn about why he does that in this passage. The first is this, is that God gives us dreams to warn us. The Bible teaches us first that God gives us dreams to warn us. Verse 16, it says this, he whispers in their ear and terrifies them with warnings. I love that phrase, whispers in their ears. Isn't that kind of how dreams are? Like dreams are these fragile things that when you try to reach out to remember, it's literally like trying to grasp an air. You just can't hold on to it. And sometimes God will send us a dream to help us avoid danger or unneeded pain or suffering. This could be in relationships. It can be with someone you're dating or maybe someone you shouldn't be dating. Or maybe there's a decision at work and you're like, I know there's a merger coming. I have this dream. I think I need to walk away. You see, for, for many people in the Bible, dreams warned of, of things that were going on. In fact, this happened to the other Joseph. This is Jesus' earthly father. So you see, he had a dream that was a warning to protect his man, family. It says this in Matthew 2, 13. It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. He said, get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. And the angel said, stay there until I tell you to return. Because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph has an angel show up in, a, in his dream and says, Joe, you got to get out of here, man. Herod's coming after you. And he wants to kill your son. He wants to kill your wife. He wants to just decimate you. And he leaves. This dream warned him of impending danger. And that's what God will sometimes do. God will sometimes send a dream to warn us of any kind of impending danger that's coming our way. This is how God is strengthening us. Remember the purpose of prophecy? It's to strengthen. It's to encourage and to comfort. See, the second thing the Bible teaches us about why God gives us dreams, is he gives us dreams to guide us. Look at Job 33, verse 17. It says this, He makes us turn from wrongdoing. He keeps them from pride. Now that phrase, turn from wrongdoing, it means, you know, turn from, you know, moral wrongdoing. But it also means actually going down the wrong path. Like you're literally going down this way, but you got to make a U-turn or a 180 and go that way. 
See, this is a big part of why God sends dreams. Dreams help us to confirm God's direction for our lives. We, we see this all again all over the Bible. In fact, this is how God used uh, you know, through a dream to launch the mission of the early church. One of the early church leaders, Paul, he has this heart and this passion to share Jesus with the whole world. But he's like, where do I start? So he's asking God, and God answered in a dream. It says this in Acts 16. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia, standing and begging, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So here's the sequence. Paul hears a man asking, Paul has a dream. There's a man in there asking for help. Paul immediately gets up and he goes with his entire team to Macedonia. See, once Paul knew what the dream meant, he obeyed it right away. This was God's encouragement to Paul saying, it's time to go. See, God will give us dreams to guide us, to encourage us, to help us know we're moving in the right direction. And the third that we see here is that God gives us dreams to bring salvation. The Bible tells us that. See, it says in verse 18, he protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. Dreams can actually save people from eternal death. That, that's what this verse means. God is actually using dreams to guide people into an eternal relationship with himself. Again, this happens in the Bible all the time through dreams. In fact, in Acts 10, there's a dude named Cornelius, and he's a good man, but he's not a God man, which means, you know, he's a, he's a good guy, but he doesn't know Jesus yet. So God shows up in his dream in Acts 10, verse 5, and it says this, Now send men to Joppa and bring back a man named Simon who is called Peter. And so what does Cornelius do? He actually obeys the dream and he invites Peter to come. By the way, Peter is also having a dream telling him, by the way, this guy Cornelius is going to send some dudes to your house. Just be aware and just go with them. Guys, the Bible again is full of examples of God using dreams to draw close to his people, to speak to them. Now, I know that some of you are probably thinking, okay, well, okay, that's fine, Pastor Nathan. I get it. God used dreams in the Bible, you know, because maybe people didn't know any better, right? Does God really still speak in dreams today? It just seems kind of far-fetched to me. Well, the answer is yes. In fact, this is really, really fascinating. There has been an incredible movement of God that's been happening in our world. It's a quiet movement, but it's growing. And it's a movement that's actually been starting since the 90s of Muslims who are actually becoming followers of Jesus. And a big part of that reason why so many are coming to Christ is through dreams. They're having dreams of Jesus because they don't have a Bible. They don't have any access to any of those things. In fact, that's Nabil Qureshi's story. Nabil was a Muslim man and had someone share the gospel with him. And what Nabil told his friend was, listen, man, this Jesus story, it's interesting. But unless God actually reveals it to me, I, 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 really, I don't really want to follow, follow him or anything like that. So he actually asked Allah to give him a dream and to settle this. Check this out. And so I asked for a vision and three dreams. The second dream was the clearest one. Mm -hmm. In the second dream, I was standing at the threshold of a narrow door. I mean, this door was just wide enough to fit me and just tall enough to fit me. And inside this doorway, I saw a feast. And I knew that that feast was heaven. And I wanted to be in that room, but I couldn't because there was someone standing at the door, my friend David, who had shared the gospel with me. And he was blocking the entryway. And I said to him, David, I thought we were going to eat together, as in I thought I was going to be in heaven. And he said, you haven't responded. Hmm. And I knew that I had to respond to his invitation to accept the gospel. But here's where it became crazy, is when he told me, Nabil, look at Luke chapter 13, verse 22. He knew his Bible. And I hadn't read this section of the Bible before, but when I opened the Bible, it said, the narrow door. Yeah. And I began reading it. It was talking about a feast in the kingdom of heaven and to make every effort to enter through that narrow door because many will try and few will be able. And you will see people sitting inside at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, make every effort to enter or you will be left outside weeping and gnashing your teeth. I knew I had to accept David's invitation because God had given me a dream straight out of the Bible and he showed me where I was. I think it's fascinating that Nabil has this dream from God and it's actually a story in the scriptures. God actually leads him to the Bible and this is actually what led him to faith. You see, for, for most Muslims, dreams are actually a central part of how they understand God's will for their lives. So they pay extra attention to what their dreams are saying. They test them for spiritual truths that are held within them. In fact, Newsweek, again, not a Christian magazine, noticed this trend among Muslims. All these people coming to Christ because of dreams. And, and they wrote this. They said, though dreams have fallen into disrepute in the West, 
They retain their currency in Islamic cultures. A common phrase found in many testimonies gathered from West Africa to East Asia began with the words, I had a dream. Isn't that fascinating? Remember what Job said? Remember what he taught us? Job said that God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in what? Dreams and visions of the night. See, God is speaking to Muslims all over the world. Many of them have no access to a Bible. They don't have access to a church. And some of them have no access to other believers. So what does God do? He shows up directly to them. If he can speak to them through dreams, don't you think he can speak to you through dreams? Or maybe family members who are far from God that have hardened their hearts? Remember the threefold purpose of prophetic dreams. Paul reminds us again, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. Now, I know that some of you, you know, as soon as we start talking about prophetic dreams and visions, maybe a little red flag goes up. Because some of you have actually experienced spiritual abuse from pastors and other spiritual leaders. You know, someone once told me that one of their pastors years ago came up to the pulpit and said, I have a dream that if you leave this church, then you're leaving God. And you've lost your salvation. And they said, you know, Pastor Nathan, I heard that. And... It just wrecked my faith. And listen, if you've experienced that, maybe through dreams or visions, through manipulation, I just want to say I am so, so sorry that you experienced that. That is not of God. And remember the purpose of prophecy. It's to strengthen. It's to encourage and comfort. And if you don't experience strengthening or encouraging or comforting, then it's it's not from God. It's just not. You know, as I've kind of been like studying and learning about dreams, you know, I'll be honest, this is kind of new territory for me. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always like, you know, I want to know more about the Bible and the facts and the stuff like that. But, but dreams is a little bit, okay, this is interesting. But I really want more of Jesus. And I'm like, all right, God, if you can reveal yourself to me through dreams, th- then I'm all in. But here's the problem. I don't remember any of my dreams. Is, did anyone relate to that? Anyone like, I don't know what I dreamed. Maybe I dreamed something. Yeah, that's totally me. So, you know, I've actually been reaching out to guys who have actually been practicing, you know, hearing from God prophetically through dreams. And actually one of them is one of our pastors, a guy named Jonathan Wilson. He's our high school pastor. And he was actually sharing to me about a dream that he had. For, it was actually for one of our worship leaders. He's like, you know, so you know, Pastor Nathan, I had this dream that one of our worship leaders was back in the sound booth. And he's EQing some stuff on the soundboard. And he's like moving all these dials up and down. He's pushing all these buttons. And I'm looking, I'm going, dude, this is crazy. You're going to like blow out people's eardrums. You got to calm down with that. But then when I listened around the room, it was beautiful. It, it was this amazing sound. And I woke up from the dream. And, and what God's kind of put on my heart to tell him was, God wants you to take some more risks. Because I think there's some amazing results that await you if you kind of take a step out in faith. And so when he went and he shared that with this worship leader, the guy goes, I can't believe you just shared that with me because we're in the process of discerning whether or not we should buy a house or not. And it's kind of this big risk. We're kind of going back and forth. I don't know if we should do it or not. But that dream was confirmation. And for them, him and his wife, this was a huge encouragement to move forward. It it gave them guidance. Guys, I want that. I want that for you. I want you to grow in your ability to hear from God for yourself and for your families and for your for other people in your lives. And I want to encourage you. If you want to start hearing from God through your dreams, we have to ask and expect him to speak in your dreams. Sometimes God is just waiting for you to kind of take that risk, that step of faith and ask. And and then you have to prepare yourself. So I actually started taking advice from an Old Testament prophet named Habakkuk. Habakkuk, he says this. He says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. Guys, let me show you my dream journal. <laughs> so one of the first things I started doing as I was kind of like, all right, Lord, I want, to, I want to hear you through my dreams, is I got a journal and I keep it by my bedside. I also have my phone in case I want to use the recorder. And when I first wake up, if I have a dream kind of lingering, I write it down because, you know, those dreams, they whisper. I want to kind of grab them before they, before they disappear. And I do that because I expect God to speak. I'm like, all right, God, if I'm asking you to speak, and I know you want me to ask, and you want to give me as much, all of you, I'm going to ask. So I got this notebook. I started recording some dreams. They're really weird. <laughs> that, that's all I got so far. But what do I do with that? What do I do? God, I got, I got these dreams. They could be from you. I'm not really sure. 
well, I don't know if these are dreams from God or, or, or is it this the gas station sushi I had the other day? Well, here, I want to share with you something I've been learning. These are four guardrails that we can put around these. Four guardrails that can kind of, that it's almost like a square that can actually keep us from getting out of bounds from where God wants to take us. And the first of these guardrails is this, is you need to square your dream with Scripture. You need to square your dream with Scripture. Every one of your dreams that you have, you've got to test against the Word of God. Remember, if it is a God dream, it is going to complement the Word of God. It will never contradict it. See, for Christ followers, any kind of dreams or words from God, it's got to pass the Scripture test. And remember, Scripture comes before our dreams. So if ever our dreams contradict what's in the Bible, a clear teaching of the Bible, well then we can throw the dream out and say, all right, God's Word comes first. For instance, if you ever say to me, Pastor Nathan, I had this dream. It was a dream about a Ferrari. I think God wants me to buy a Ferrari. Okay, um, can you afford a Ferrari? No, but if I mortgage my house, I can get one. Well, you think that's being a good steward? Yeah, but God told me I need to get this car. <laughs> well, bro, that is not a dream from God. That's just bad theology because the Bible teaches what? That the borrower is a slave to the lender. It's not from God. It's your own selfish consumeristic tendencies. Guys, if God has really spoken to you in his dream, it's never going to contradict God's word. It's gonna, they're going to come together. You got to keep them kind of, you know, you've got to make sure that they're squared like this. Like, because if we start to maybe go off a little bit, we could go in a direction that isn't where God's leading us. In the same way, when you have a dream, and I know some folks that they like to run it through a formula. Where they're like, you know, this color means this, and this image means that, and this, this, is, co this is a code for this. I I'll be honest, I'm always skeptical when I hear that. Because here's the danger. The danger is we start to rely on the formula to interpret our dreams and not the Holy Spirit. Remember whose business it is to interpret dreams? It's whose? It's, it's God's business. And so, you know, I think sometimes we see this model in Scripture where when Jesus is healing people, he never does, the, does it the same way twice. You ever notice that? One guy, he's, he's praying for him on his eyes. One guy, he spits in the ground and makes mud and rubs it on his eyes. Another guy, he just kind of spits in his eyes. Why does Jesus do that? To show that there's no sacred method in how you do it, but it's all about trusting and relying in the power of God. Here's the thing. Sometimes... You have a dream, and you just know it's a God dream. You just know that this is from God. I don't know how to explain it. You just kind of know. It's the, kind of the Holy Spirit confirms it. In fact, I asked some of y'all on Facebook, if God's ever spoken to you through a prophetic dream, and many of you shared some really incredible stories. In fact, here's one from my friend Becky. She had this dream where she wrote this. She says this, Hey, Nathan, I had a Jesus speak to me twice in dreams. Once in high school, I was in active rebellion out of disappointment with life, disappointment with God not following or listening. And in my dreams, he told me to turn my life around, to go to a Christian college, not my plan, and to trust him. I did not doubt for one second that it was real. So guys, the purpose of Becky's dream was to actually get direction. She was being warned. She's like, you know, I'm going down this direction where I am partying and I'm drinking and, and I'm in full out rebellion against God. And Jesus showed up in my dream. He goes, you want to turn the other way. This way is not going to lead to anywhere where you want to go. And so she turns away from her sin and she goes in this specific direction. God tells her, hey, you should go to this Christian college. It was very specific. Clearly, you could tell that was a dream that actually honored God's word. It actually complemented it. It didn't contradict it. But maybe you're like me. Maybe you've got a notebook of some really shadowy dreams. You're like, I don't know what this really means. And this is when you have to submit your dream to God. This is number two. Submit your dream to God. Sometimes you have a dream and you're not really sure what God's saying. You, you get this prophetic word and it's kind of like a puzzle piece. And you may not know where exactly this piece fits. Like where does this piece go? But here's the thing. God will reveal what it means when you need it. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says this. We know in part and we prophesy in part. Which means it's okay to receive a dream and just wait for God to complete the puzzle. And that way God will do that by bringing mature, discerning, and spirit-filled brothers and sisters in Christ to help you. Like, you may find that there's believers maybe in your small group in your church that can actually help you discern and help you whether, know whether this is a God dream or a you dream. In fact, that's how my friend Suzanne is able to discern whether she's hearing from God or not. In fact, she writes this on Facebook. She wrote this. She said, I, I have God speak to me in dreams. I don't always know what they mean. So I have a few sisters in Christ that talk about them with me. One specific dream was related to a major upcoming life change. I was praying for one thing, and God's answer was a clear no via my dream. To me, I hoped it was bad food. 
But it, but it was a confirmation from God. And I knew because I had peace. That peace is hard to describe, but I knew that I was going to walk into the fire rather than be rescued from it. But I knew I wasn't going along. Remember the purpose? The purpose of Scripture? The purpose of prophecy? To comfort us. Susanna submitted her dreams to God. And here's what I think is so fascinating. He confirmed it. Not with what she wanted to do, but maybe what she didn't want to do. And she chose to trust and obey. And he led her through the fire. And he said, I was going to be with her. She knew that God was with her, she, which is encouraging. Remember, the purpose of the prophetic dreams. The one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. See, after you start to square Scripture and your prophetic dreams together, and, and after you submit it to God, come to number three. Hold on to your dream. Hold on to it. I love what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 20-21. He writes this. He says, Do not treat prophecies with contempt. But test them all and hold on to what is good. See, after we've had our dreams, we've tested them, we're called to hold on to those dreams. Remember, God may give you a prophetic dream about your job, but it may not be for the job you have now. It may not be something that you might need until months or even years down the road. When that happens, we got to put that dream on the shelf and let God bring it to reality in his time. It may not be relevant for right now, but it doesn't mean that it has no relevance. In fact, you might just need to wait on it until the dream is ready. And you might need to keep your eyes on Jesus. And as things get challenging or difficult, maybe this dream is there as a reminder to keep going. Remember what Pastor Tim said? The ultimate test for a God dream is time. I think the same is true for prophetic dreams. You know, it reminds me of the story of a youth pastor. His name was Lauren Cunningham. And he was a youth pastor in the 50s. And uh, he had just taken some kids on a mission trip to the Caribbean. And he's getting ready to kind of do a message. Because, you know, they do these like night rallies. So he's getting ready to kind of preach. And so he's praying. He's awake. And then all of a sudden, he starts to see this giant map unfold on the wall. Now he's awake. He's not asleep. And it's huge. And as the map is, is kind of like, you know, it's the map of the entire world. The topographical map. And he starts to see waves of young adults and 20-something starting to cover the nations. All the nations were all, it's almost like waves, like they're, they're moving in, they're moving out. And he's like, you know, I didn't know what this meant, but I knew that God was doing something, and I wanted to be a part of it. So Lauren Cunningham, with a handful of kids on one mission trip, it eventually became an international organization called Youth with a Mission, also known as YWAM, an organization of 18,000 people and listen, they have a location in every single country. I mean, check this out. They literally have a location where they are saturating the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here's what's interesting. Lauren Cunningham had this vision in 1954, and he left it on the shelf. And it took decades for him to see that vision of waves. Waves of young adults and 20-somethings going into all the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now listen, your prophetic dream or vision, it may not be to start a worldwide missions organization or anything like that. But maybe God gave you a dream about your kids to, to come to Christ. And, and you look at where they're at now, and they're struggling, they're doubting. Maybe they're even hostile to faith. But God spoke to you in a dream. And even though you don't see it yet, you're going to keep it on the shelf. And you're going to wait. Or, or maybe it's to, to do something big for God that you're like, I, God, I don't even know if that's even possible. Or that seems so out of reach. Put it on the shelf. And let God bring it to come about. And sometimes... God might give you a dream, but it's not for you. It's actually for someone else. And when that happens, this brings us to the fourth guardrail, which is to share your dream with humility. Share your dream with humility. Now, if you stick around church long enough, at some point, someone will come up to you and be like, brother, sister, I got a word for you. That happened to anybody yet? Don't worry, it will. And you're like, oh, they have a word for me. Like, what's the word? Is it like abracadabra? Like, <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? And usually what they mean is they have a word from God specifically for you. And usually it's, it's nothing fun like, you know, God told me to buy you a car. What color would you like? You know, that, that'd be great. <laughs> In fact, it can actually sometimes get a little weird, a little awkward. In fact, one time I had a person come up to me and they said, you know, Pastor, I see that there is a prophetic power coming out of your eyes. And like, she's staring in my eyes. I'm like, this feels super awkward. Like, 
is she hitting on me? Like, what, what is going on? And I was like, where's my wife? Help me. Um, because, you know, I think what, what feels really weird and awkward about it is like the people that are all of a sudden really presumptive. They're like, oh, I know something about you that you don't know about yourself. But the reality is sometimes God will use other people to give you a word or an insight. And, you know, sometimes it can be kind of crazy. You know, I remember um, Pastor Cairo was telling me that her husband had someone approach him. He was going through a, a struggle with a situation at work. And this person went up to her husband and said, hey, listen, I don't know if this makes sense or not, but God's telling me that you're struggling with what you're struggling with right now. God is going to resolve it. And 24 hours from now, you can take heart and have hope. And he was like, oh, okay, that's weird. <laughs> but then the next day it happened. There was, a, there was conflict with some coworkers, and it got worked out. And he was like, how did they know? How did you know that was going to happen? He didn't know. God did. And God wanted to give him encouragement and comfort through one of his servants. Now listen, it doesn't have to be weird. It can be really simple. In fact, if you have a word for someone, and you're like, I don't know how to say it without seeming weird, here's kind of how I approach I always go, hey, listen, um, I was wondering if I could have permission to share something with you. I don't know if this is from God or not. I may be wrong, but I feel like I just want to share this. I can see that you've been kind of discouraged about your kids. And, you know, you're really struggling with it. But I had this dream that you kind of had this white flag and you were waving it. And it symbolized, and I felt like God was saying, you're surrendering your heart to God. You're surrendering your kids to him. And God's going to help you. He's going to help you make sense in this crazy season. And you're planting seeds in their lives right now. You're planting seeds in their hearts you're not going to see the fruit of. So much, much later. Now notice, you're not speaking dogmatically, but actually coming from a posture of humility. Because, listen, we're all finite, fallible human beings. We, we, we sometimes miss it when God speaks. In fact, we want to encourage them, listen, just go ahead and chew the meat and spit out the bones. Whatever isn't of God, just kind of throw it out. In fact, I have a friend of mine who's really, really masterful at this, especially with really sensitive things. She's my friend Bethany. She shared this story on Facebook. She said, I've had quite a few talking about prophetic dreams. Usually what happens to me is I dream a dream, then I kind of wake up out of it, but still half asleep, and God, through his spirit, interprets them for me and tells me why I've dreamt it. Usually to share with others for edification. Edification means to encourage or to learn a lesson from it. One of my faves was a few years ago. A co-worker's wife had miscarried a few months prior to my dream. I dreamt she was in labor, giving birth to her next child. God told me to share it with him, so I did. Three weeks later, he took me aside and told me that she was already pregnant when I had the dream, but she didn't even know it yet. Now they have two beautiful children. I want to recognize that this is really, really sensitive stuff. You know, if someone is just going through a divorce or they've lost a baby, please be very, very careful about when you share the word. Because you can have a right word and share it at the wrong time, and it can do more damage than good. But you can have the right word, speak it at the right time, and it can be a blessing. Remember the purpose of prophecy. Paul tells us the, the one who prophesies speaks to people for strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. See, God was able to use my friend Bethany's dream to actually encourage her coworker, to actually get a glimpse of what God was doing in their situation. That doesn't always happen that way. But really, God's heart is to encourage us. God wants you to be encouraged. God wants you to be blessed so that you can encourage and bless others. He wants you to know that he loves you. He is for you, and he's speaking to you. He's always speaking. God is a God that's always talking, talking, talking. But remember what Job taught us? For God speaks again and again, though people do not recognize it. He speaks in dreams, in visions of the night. Can I ask, what if God has been speaking to you? Maybe you've asked him something and he answered it, but it came through a dream and you're like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. That was like the bad sushi. And you're like, well, God, I don't know. I'm not really comfortable with you speaking through dreams. Why don't you just speak through, you know, Pastor Tim or Pastor Nathan? That's much easier. But, you know, God cares so much more for you and your character, for the ability to listen to him, and sometimes for what we're comfortable with. See, he wants to build your faith, build your trust in him. Remember what the difference is between a prophetic dream and a normal dream? It's Holy Spirit. 
In the last days, remember, we were promised this great power, uh, this, this outpouring of the Spirit. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And we see that promise fulfilled in the New Testament and he's still fulfilling it today. He's fulfilling it in the Islamic world. And if God could speak to Muslims who have no access to a Bible or a church or other believers because God loves them, think about what he wants to do for you. Think about the family members that you can't reach, but God can reach them through dreams and through visions. He's pursuing their hearts even more than you can. Here's what I want to do right now. I want to create some space for you to hear from the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit loves to show up in worship. So we're going to be singing the words, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Because we're going to welcome him into this place. We're going to ask him to fill this place. Wherever you're watching right now, it's holy ground. Right now, we claim it in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're watching from, it's holy ground. And Jesus wants to fill you and he wants to fill this place. And so as we start to sing, you're going to experience the Holy Spirit touch you. Some of you, your hands might start to get warm. Some of you may start to cry. Others, you might feel this deep, deep peace, this comfort. It just means that the Holy Spirit's doing a work in you. As God is desperate to speak to you. And he does it through prayer. And his primary way of speaking to us is through the scriptures. But in 2021, what if, what if God wants to reveal himself to you in a fresh new way? What if this was the year you started to hear God through your dreams and visions? I know some of us were doing our 21-day Daniel fast where we're actually fine-tuning our antennae to hear from God. And what if one of the ways he's been speaking and he's waiting for you to capture it is through your dreams? Do you want more of God, church? Do you want all that he has for you? See, I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I don't want you to be like, oh my gosh, like what is going on here? I just want us to be in a place where we can surrender and fully receive everything that God has for us. Amen? In fact, why don't we do this? Why don't you all stand with me? And as you're standing, would you do this? Would you hold your hands up, palms up? Really is a sign that we want to receive what God has for us. You know, maybe for some of you, God's got a prophetic word for you, or it's a vision or a dream, or maybe it's something else. See, I think we need to come to God with expectation, without agenda. God, however you want to speak to me, just do it. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come right now. Your word promises that we would see visions and dream dreams. Your word promises us that we would be experiencing a deep, intimate relationship with you, God. So I pray that you would reveal yourself through our dreams, through visions. God, help us uh, not to put you in a box, but rather to patiently wait on you because you are speaking to us. As, as, as you taught us in Job, you are speaking all the time through visions, dreams of the night. And so, Father, we just come before you in humility with a posture of openness to receive whatever you have for us. Would you give us dreams? Would you give us visions? Would you help us have direction? Would you help us have warning when we need it? Would you help us to also just, you know, as we think of those who don't know you, would you reveal yourself to them in, in their dreams? Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your encouragement and your comfort that's coming our way. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching the Liquid Church YouTube channel. Hey, don't stop here. I want to invite you to be part of our online community. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this with a friend. You know, everybody's welcome to join us. If you are blessed by this message, you can support our ministry by clicking the Give Now button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Christ. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.